This is the Brandon Smith Show, and I'm your host, Brandon Smith, and the entire purpose of the show is one singular thing, and that's to help you live a life that much more free from dysfunction. So today, we are going to talk about self-care, and specifically within self-care, we're going to talk about yoga. And so I have a, a good friend of mine, and yoga, Diane, you didn't know I was going to say this, but I'm going to call Diane a yoga guru. Uh -huh. Can I call you that? Are you okay with that? You can call me that, but you know, sometimes they get in trouble. But I, we're not going to get in trouble today. We're no, good. no, we're not. We're not. So, so Diane, you're going to take us on this journey talking about yoga and, and ways we can apply that to self-care to help us be, be healthier, be more relaxed, help us relax even in times of stress, whether we're talking about workplace stress or as we're moving into holiday seasons, uh, right. fa family stress. And so before mm -hmm. um, we go too far down that path, now you are the founder of Almost Home Yoga. That's right. And you started that in, in 2013. Is that right? Yeah, about five years ago. Okay. All right. So before we jump into yoga, you know, I, I love story time. So tell, tell me and us a little bit about your journey. What, what brought yeah. you down this path and what was, sure. what's been kind of your journey that ultimately found you in this place? Okay. Well, one of my favorite sayings, Brandon, is that not all who wander are lost because that's, I have that's kind of wandered. Awesome. That is awesome. I love that. Yeah. So I wandered into this uh, practice of yoga um, because I was training for a marathon back in like 2000, 2002. And a friend took me to a yoga class and I loved it. I loved it for a lot of reasons, but back then it was what kept me injury free while I was doing a lot of running. Mm. And, uh, but then the, all the other benefits of it started to uh, make themselves known like, uh, being able to uh, deal with uh, relationships in a healthier way and really so you even noticed that from yoga oh, absolutely so it wasn't absolutely. just the physical about that. okay but it yeah. wasn't physical but you found it play out in many other parts yeah, of your it life started in the physical and I think especially for those of us in the West you know this practice came from India but for those of us in the West we come at it from the aspect of exercise first and foremost. Yeah. For us, but there's so much other um, stuff to it that um, that that's where it gets to be like a really kind of a lifestyle journey. Mm. I'll tell you a little bit about my journey and then we can talk more about yoga. Okay, cool. So that was in 2002. Prior to that, I've always been a mover. I was trained as a dancer. Um, my undergraduate degree is in dance performance. Um, I'm a collector of useless degrees. <laughs> but um, we can, that's for another day. Um, those can also be the beneficial. The entire production group just started bursting into <laughs> laughter when you said that. <laughs> <laughs> They're my people, Brandon. They're my people. <laughs> anyway, so um, but so I've always been a mover, but this is the thing about yoga. So I did it um, pretty consistently for you know ten years or so, kind of off and on. The studio that I used to go to near us closed, and then in uh, 2011. I was literally stopped in my tracks. I was in a um, debilitating car accident mm. and uh, was very fortunate that my lower body was uh, safe, but my upper body, pretty much my entire left side, um, broken ribs, fractured scapula, broken arm in two places, um, collapsed lung. And so I spent like four months pretty much doing nothing, laying around and it wasn't the movement of yoga that was so critical for my healing. It was having learned how to be still. Mm. So that's the last thing you do in yoga, in a yoga practice, is be still. So you can start out as a, you know, it can start out as exercise and it turns into something completely different. Wow. So. And of course, the whole point of yoga to start from the back, start backwards, and we can go back to the beginning if you want. The whole point of yoga is to connect to um, something bigger than yourself, to the universe, to the divine, which I would call God. Um, mm. So that's the whole point of all of everything else that comes before it, the movement, breathing, all that stuff. You know, I, I had mentioned to you before we started the podcast today that I'm really, truly am an a amateur. Like I, I've done enough, just a little bit of yoga, but I, I really haven't even done enough to even say I've done a, cu a couple of classes. So, I mean, I'm really am wanting to learn, but I have heard f f that, that something you commented on that in the West, we really do do it more like exercise and it's really mm -hmm. not, 
it's not really designed to be that. It, it can do that, but that's the design right. is the purpose of it is different. Yeah, it, I mean, it, it is great exercise, and it, it can be all kinds of things. Um, you know, uh, scientific. You know, Western medicine is starting to use it more prescriptively for diseases and um, you know stuff like that. But um, yeah, it was it was always designed to to be. Um, a progression of uh, practices that drew you closer to the divine. Wow. So, so you used it to heal yourself and then now you're healing others with it. Hopefully. Hopefully. <laughs> that's the, that's, that's the plan. Goal. That's the goal. Share it with as many people as possible. Uh, okay. So now that moves us into this topic of, of what are some ways that we can use it to both help alleviate our stress, keep ourselves healthier uh, and even whether it's in the workplace or even in our personal lives right now, what, what are some of your thoughts around that? Right. Well, there are um, a myriad ways you could use yoga for self-care, but I've picked three really simple things that I think people can hold on to to uh, do during the course of their day that, um, that hopefully will help their whole day go better and help them feel better about themselves and Better, better about the people they live and work with. Okay, I like so, three. I can, I can remember three. I'm ready. Yeah, okay, good. Okay, good. So, um, you know, Brandon, if if I had a podcast, I would introduce it. Uh, my my goal would be to um, help us to be good stewards of mind, body, and spirit, so that we can be our best selves for others. Okay. So, okay. mind, body, and spirit. It comes out that way. So we're going to start with the mind. So first thing in the morning, here's number one. First thing in the morning, maybe even before your feet hit the floor, is just to um, either, you know, maybe sitting up, maybe standing up, maybe laying down, maybe you haven't even gotten out of bed yet. Just take a few deep breaths. You know, just inhale through your nose, keep your eyes closed, inhale through your nose, exhale through your nose, and do that three or four times. Brandon, I can see you doing it right there. And you're doing yoga. You're doing it. You're doing yoga. I'm doing yoga. So, I'm so excited. Um, that's it. So after you've had your three or four deep breaths and you kind of settle yourself, it'll settle your mind. Um, decide how you want to approach your day. Like what lens do I want to use today to approach whatever it is that's on my calendar, whoever I'm going to encounter. And it could be, again, you could probably pull out Webster's and come up with thousands of words, but it could be something like compassion or be a good listener or humility or service that any kind of a lens that you decide you want to carry out throughout your day. So you're using it to set intentionality for yes. the day. Yeah. See, so I you're going to use those beauty breaths to just set your intention for the day. Beautiful. See, I did not expect you to, to start off this conversation with, with laying oh. in bed in the morning and deep breaths. But that's exactly. You want to say more about what you were expecting, or well, I was that? I was really expecting, in my simple brain, um, poses and stretches, and and that was actually not what you did. But that's exactly what I need, because right. every Monday morning, and my wife knows this all too well. Every Monday morning, for whatever reason, I just think getting ready for the week, I wake up with a tremendous amount of anxiety. Mm, just, mm-hmm. just, 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 yeah, you know, I'm sure. even having anxious dreams, whatever. It's just, just, I'm just so wound up every, yeah. every Monday morning. And so yeah. just to be able to lay there, take some deep breaths, release that, and then set my intentionality mm-hmm. for the day. Yeah. That's perfect. That's okay. You, you're, you're helping me already, <laughs> Diane. Okay. Awesome. So, you know, it's not a bad thing to stay with the same intention for a period of time, maybe for the whole week, maybe for a month, you know, if it works, Stick with the same one for a while. So that, that can be really helpful. If not, then and you wake up and choose a different one every day. That's okay, too. So that's number one. Okay, number one. I got it. The beauty of that is that the cue to come back to your intention is breathing. So throughout the day, sometimes we do it without even realizing. We'll just... <sighs> I think I can hear you hitting on a table as you're saying that. Like emphasizing oh, breathing yeah. is what I need to be doing. Okay, I got it. Okay. I don't yeah, do so, that. I don't, you know, I'm not intentional about that. When you have a minute that. to take a breath, it always brings you back to your intention. So that's okay. the first one. So that's a way to kind of get your mind tracking and keep it on track for the day. Okay. All right. I got okay. it. So number two. Number two is really important, but it's also a little bit tricky and um, because it involves movement. Finally, Brandon, some movement. You get to move. All right. And it's really, really simple. It's just moving the spine in all six directions that it will move. Because 
the spine is where you begin. You know, it houses our entire central nervous system and all of our nerves run through the spaces in our vertebra and talk to everything, right? Our muscles, our organs, everything. So you got to move the spine and it's best to move it in all six directions if you can. Now, the caution is if you've got something wrong with your spine, say herniated discs or stenosis, or you've had surgery of some sort, you need to check with your um, medical provider to be sure that you can really move your spine in all six directions safely. You might know it. The way that you know that you shouldn't move your spine that way would be pain, right? So a little discomfort is okay. Pain, you probably shouldn't be doing it. So you know what I'm thinking, Brandon, since uh, some, some people won't be able to hear us, I'm going to make a video just for you, just a little really short video. Maybe it might end up being two minutes or five minutes. Okay. And I will send you the link. Love it. So that, that everybody get, and you put it in your show notes so that everybody can see how to move their spine in all six directions. Take you a couple minutes to do in your chair, maybe before you go to lunch. So you can do this while sitting. Absolutely. Absolutely. You know, your spine uh, go, moves in six directions. So I don't know. You want me to show you a little bit now? I can't, we uh, can't yeah, see Yeah. You, you kind of had me at six directions. So side to side, right? Like okay. you're squished between a couple pieces of glass. You yep. just go to one side and take a few breaths, getting as long as you can. So it's all about making more space. And then you go to the other side, take a few breaths. I'm, I'm really tempted to do this right now, but well, I you should, I, right? I, I, and your team can I am them. so inflexible, Diane. Oh, so, this is, this, so I think my, my team just rolls me around on this chair. Like I don't, even, I don't even move. <laughs> all right. I'm going to, I'm going to make this video for you right when we're done. Go ahead and move it. So like nobody's going to laugh at you or anything. Try and fold over straight to the side. Nice. All right. Come on I, back think up. I, I think I felt something pull right there. Right there. <laughs> make yourself even. Go to the other side, right? Yeah. All right. Come on back to center. Then we're going to move. So that's two directions. Then we're going to move in two more. You're going to do it with me, okay? Like okay. on your mirror. Okay. Sit up really tall. Really tall. You don't have any um, spinal injuries, do you? Uh, not at the moment. Nothing, nothing diagnosed. No. How about that? How about no. that? We'll no. find, we'll find out. <laughs> Take your right hand and put it over to the left somewhere and twist around like you're twisting around a rod. You can maybe even look over your shoulder, right? Take a big breath, get taller and then exhale. Come on back to center. Okay. Okay. Good. Inhale, get really, really tall again. And then you're going to exhale, twist to the other side. So always get taller on the inhales and maybe twist a little deeper on the exhale. Look over your back shoulder and come on back to center. Okay. Just sit for a moment. What you notice? How do you feel? You feel better? I feel good. You look good. I, I feel better. I do. Yeah. So that's it. So the other two directions are kind of like what you hear about cat cow and they're the ones that can be kind of tricky. So if you were to think of yourself as a capital C, Right when so your nose is the top of the C, and you would just kind of pull your mid back back toward your chair and let your head drop, right? Okay. Kind of curling your pelvis under, right? Yep. Okay. And then on an inhale, sit up really tall, and you're going to lift your chest to the sky and kind of think of your pelvis as a bowl, like you're tilting the bowl of, of cereal forward, right? And then lift your chest. Maybe look up the ceiling if it's okay with your neck. And on the next up, my back. So those, that's it, Brandon. Move your spine in all six directions, at least once a day. I'm a yoga pro. Got it? I'm a yoga pro. You are. You are a yoga pro. <laughs> all right. So I noticed we're all ready to break. Uh, so okay. let's, let's take a break. And we come back. So we've gotten our first one around breathing, our second right. one around movement with our spine, right? Right. And, and, those, and those six different ways we can move our spine. Move the spine, and, right? and there's still a number three. So do you want it to be a surprise? Oh, you... yes. That's what you do okay. when you go into break. Absolutely. <laughs> Don't forget to come back. <laughs> that's right. So stay tuned when we come back. We're going to hit number three, and we're going to start to bring them all together. We'll be right back. Great. Hey, this is Brandon with your coaching minute for the week. So one of the very simple tips that I give my clients that find I find to be extremely helpful and beneficial with their direct reports. So for those manager clients of mine uh, is to do this. So at some point in the year, often about halfway between the time you give the performance review and the next performance review. So that six month mark during your one on ones with your direct reports at the end of the one on ones, I want you to ask your direct reports the start, stop, continue question. So in other words, you ask them this, 
What can I start doing to support you better? What can I stop doing that's getting in your way? And what can I continue doing that will help support you more? And what they come back to me and tell me is they say, oh my gosh, it was so amazing to hear not only the feedback, but how different each of my direct reports are and what they need from me. So think about a time this year when you can do that. Now, one more important thing around this tip, make sure you let your direct reports know that you're going to do that so they can think and prepare prior to that meeting. I promise you'll not only feel better, but you'll thank me for, for doing that. So that is your coaching minute for the week. I look forward to hearing how it goes. All right, welcome back to the Brandon Smith Show. And so right before our break, we were, we were actually, folks, we were doing yoga. We weren't talking about yoga. We do stuff on this show. And right. so I'm feeling particularly rested and relaxed and stretched out. And so, uh, Diane, you were talking before about breathing and, and even mm -hmm. breathing in a, in, in when we wake up in the morning, set our intention. We were talking about movement and moving right. our spine in the six different directions that we can do which feels yep. fantastic, by the way. Uh, and then now there's a third one. What's our third there one? Is. There is. So I talked about the breathing and setting your intention in the morning and then sometime during your workday, maybe before lunch, moving your spine in those six directions. And then the last thing I have for you is, um, and so that was kind of mind, body. And the last thing I have for you is something to do at the end of the day, which is, can be a really um, uh, kind of a spiritual exercise. Great way to end your day. Hmm. So... Um, it's very simple, very, very simple. It's just ask yourself a couple of questions and maybe a third. So the first two would be, uh, what went right with my day or what did I love about my day? And the second would be the opposite. What didn't go so well for me? What, where, where was it hard? Where was there a strain in my relationships or something like that? You know, what didn't I love about my day? After you did that, I mean, that's enough, right? Just to recognize what you what went well and what didn't go so well. I think because we're human, we naturally are inclined to say, hmm, I might see something I could change. And so if you think about something you want to change, uh, you just think, hmm, I could do that differently or I want to do more of, of one thing and less of another or listen to people differently or interact in a different way. And so then you just say, oh, okay, well, that's something to think about. Take a deep breath, lay your head on the pillow and be done. No, I, I can do this. You can do this. I can do this. All right. So I want to go back to this one on number three. Okay. Because I want to make sure I'm doing this right. Okay. So do we keep it high level, more closely aligned to like our intentions? Like, did I kind of yeah. um, embody the kind of person I wanted to embody today? Or is it more s specific and tactical? Like, gosh, I kind of messed up that number and I need to go back and work on my, on my math. Better. Yeah. I think it's more, you know, 30,000 foot. It's, um, uh, so we could go back to that whole concept of connecting to the divine maybe yep. or the universe or whatever you want to call it. Um, and so maybe, you know, where did I see God at work today and where did I struggle to see that? Or where did I feel most connected to the universe? And, you know, and it could be very specific as, oh, it was when I was in that meeting and we were all coming up with great ideas to solve a problem. And the flip side of it could have been, oh, you know, I forgot to pick up my dog from the kennel and they called and told me he was going to have to spend the night again. And you feel like a heel, right? <laughs> so that might give you a clue as to, uh, you know, yeah. Okay, so this helps me because the way you described it there, the words that were coming to my mind were it's more about noticing and being curious rather than judging and beating ourselves up. Yes, absolutely. Fair? Just noticing and being curious. And then if you get, get into a pattern of it and you, and you do it for several days in a row, you might, well, you might notice some patterns, you know, and, the, and, and it can give you a clue to, uh, you know, how to have your best life, Brandon, keep doing the things that you are going well for you and let go of the things that aren't, hmm. you know? Okay. You know, Diane, I can do these three. You can, I can do this. I like doing these. It. You're doing yoga. I really like these. And so much more. All right. Yeah. So we, we still have a little bit of time left. So, so now that okay. we've kind of got these three, 
Mm-hmm. What else would you, what other kind of tips could you give us on how we can integrate yoga into our lives or principles of yoga into our lives, whether it's in the workday or even in our personal lives? Sure. So um, it's really interesting because the yoga's, um, yoga starts with, um, and I won't get too uh, detailed because I want people to be curious and explore on their own. So that's part of yoga is being curious. You know, it's going from, uh, it's starting with just noticing And then uh, you might get a little uncomfortable, particularly when you're doing the poses, right? Like you might get a little uncomfortable in a yoga pose. You might have noticed that side stretch felt a little uncomfortable, but that's discomfort's okay. That's where we grow. And you just have to be sure that you are, um, you know, doing it in a safe and pain-free way. So back to that. So, but but yoga starts with, they're kind of like the 10 commandments. It's uh, do things like do no harm um, or things that you don't, that you shouldn't do like, um, don't be, don't covet things. Don't, um, you know, uh, don't, uh, try stuff that you're not ready to try. Like I've Mm. had that happen. Somebody gets into my studio and they're super fit. Like you are, I'm sure. And, um, they think they're going to pop right. Uh, There was laughter when you said that from the same production group. Well, they are my people, Brandon. (sighs) I wasn't laughing when I said it. You notice I I know you weren't laughing. But they thought it was hysterical. So you have to take it one step at a time. You know, you might think you could pop into a headstand and physically you might be ready, but your brain isn't there yet. So you've got to start slow with like, they're called the yamas and the niyamas. Do no harm. Cleanliness is important. um, And uh, self-reflection is important. Breathing, breath is is the third one. Pranayama is, is breathing, like really starting to notice your breath. And so there's so many entry points for people who don't see themselves as physically fit or want to exercise. They could explore that alone. They could ex- explore breath exercises, which these things are known to reduce blood pressure, lower heartbeat, lower cortisol, the stress hormone that our bodies produce in that fight or flight response. Um, so there's some really accessible ways for people who don't, who are, um, who are reluctant to go into a yoga studio with all those super fit people in their uh, fancy yoga clothes. You can uh, do it at home. You can, uh, you can get a book. It's better to have a teacher, you know, somebody you can go to for, um, to help you navigate it safely. But um, you could just sit for 10 minutes and notice your breath and see if you could get your mind to still and that that's doing yoga. Um, Okay, yeah. so I, I have a question for you. Mm-hmm. I'm sure some of the people listening, and, and I can fall, find myself falling in this trap too, can be competitive. Mm. And there, while there might be some activities where there's a place for competition, like running a marathon, for yeah. example, whether right. you're competing with yourself or others, right. the way you describe yoga doesn't sound like yoga no. and competition really go hand in hand. No, it's it, it would... I would call it less about competition. And even, I mean, you can compete with yourself in yoga. You could say, I held a handstand today for 10 breaths. Tomorrow I'm going to try it for 15. Is that what we're going to do on the next show? I'm mm -hmm. going to do do a handstand for the next show? Okay. Yeah. That's great. You're going to, you're going to, you're going to, um, next podcast is going to be live from Almost Home Yoga. Yeah. And that will be our blooper reel. We're going to take a show on the road. We're going to take a show. Uh, That's the blooper reel for the year. Maybe. <laughs> we can make them them all in one in one shot. <laughs> anyway, so there are ways that you could compete with yourself, but it's not really about that. It's getting to know your. It's, it's more about getting to know yourself better and maybe to stretch your limits. So if you stay in a yoga pose for a period of time, you notice what we call like an edge. And if you breathe, you you might be at your edge, say in a forward fold where you're stretching your hamstrings, and you might get to your edge where you you can stay there, but your body's it's right where, but right before where your body's screaming to get out of it, it's the edge. But then if you stay there and take a few more deep breaths, your edge might go further out. And so oh. and in that way, if that feels like a kind, kind of a competition with yourself, I don't think competition is really the word to use, but there's a growth process that, that um, happens in yoga. Never, ever, ever comparing yourself to somebody else. So everybody is different. Every journey has been different. We all carry stuff in our bodies from the things that we've been through, and it's um, not a good idea to be looking around the room. Yeah. Ever. 
So I'm noticing time. It looks like I've got time for my one last question. So okay. this is kind of a, a, a good, moving towards our end. Mm -hmm. What are some signs you look for in people where you say to yourself, oh yeah, she needs yoga or oh yeah, he, he needs yoga. What, what are some good clues? So for the listeners listening to this, you know, they're, they're probably commuting to or from work. What are some clues that they should be thinking about saying, yeah, maybe I should consider yoga. Yeah. So uh, if you are commuting and you honk at the person in front of you, you should maybe do more yoga. I should probably do more yoga. Okay, keep going. Uh, um, if you have um, uh, some limitations in your body, such as really tight hamstrings that are going to affect eventually affect the health of your spine, I, I should I should probably should I should probably yoga. do more yoga. Right. Yeah. Okay, I'm two for two. Let's go. Let's keep going. Okay. If you just bit, well, that's kind of up there with the uh, with the honking. Uh, if you are in a place where you think you've seen it all and done it all and life has no more adventure in it, you should do more yoga. Mm. I could go on. Yeah. I could go on and on and on. If you hunch or hunched over a computer every day and your spine is not properly aligned, you should do more yoga. Do you want me to keep going? Those are all really, really good. So I'm getting the sense that it could be both your body telling you, but also your mind telling you. Absolutely. Absolutely. I'm, I laughed, especially because uh, I don't even have to say it anymore. Uh, if Tom and I are out and about and um, I used to say to him all the time, oh, he should do more yoga or she should do more yoga. Or, and so now he does it. He just says, I know she should do more yoga. Nice. <laughs> <laughs> he also recently coined me the yogi to the fogies. So the there's that. The we can do it our whole life. <laughs> That's beautiful. That's beautiful. Okay, so we're 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 tracking right on time. Uh, Diane, I ask all of my guests this question as we get close to closing. What is one good life hack for us to help us live a life more free from dysfunction? And that life hack could be personal or professional. Well, you won't be surprised that it is yoga. <laughs> take a breath. Brandon, take a breath before you speak. Right. So the point of that is to respond and not react. So just take a breath before you open your mouth. You know, it's funny now. now there's a lot of laughter coming from the production crew. Now that one, I was listening to a book uh, by Brene Brown and she was talking about a conference that she had gone to. Mm -hmm. uh, and she does a lot of, you know, research on shame and vulnerability. Right. And she was a speaker and, and one of the other speakers there was a woman, I think who, um, had kind of a Buddhist background mm -hmm. and Brene was saying uh, she was tired and she said, Oh, well, you know, we're going to, we're going to be doing a panel tonight. And, and now there's the meet and greet and I got to go. And the, the other speaker said, well, why, why do you have to go? She said, well, I don't want to let anybody down. And the mm -hmm. speaker said, you know, I'm going to go back to my room and, and lay down and rest. And then that other speaker said this, which I think ties into what you said really well. She said, tonight, when we are doing the panel, we're going to be teaching and we're going to be exhaling. And for every exhale, you must inhale. Uh-huh. And so it's, it was a good reminder that you can't spend your entire day or life exhaling. No. You must find you must, that time to inhale. inhale. Yes. So it made me think of that. Nice, Brandon. Take yeah. a breath. Take a breath. Do yoga. Hey, do yoga. I'm, hey, you, you, I'm sold. I, I clearly some... am in desperate need of yoga. So uh, All right. Well, we're going to schedule that uh, private semi-private with Emily at Almost Home in the next few weeks. Yeah, and uh, and who knows? A camera might show up. I was going to say. And we might have some blooper, your, blooper reel your, for... You're welcome to. Yeah. Um, so, Diane, uh, so if people want to learn more about you and what you're up to, where can they go? Well, they can go to my Facebook page, which is almosthomeyoga.com, or Almost Home Yoga, or my uh, website, almosthomeyoga.com. So, uh, you know, I'm in the midst of kind of uh, doing some... Uh, updating and uh, modifications and really kind of getting focused on where I want to go in 2019. So um, that'll be more like retreat formats, which that's another thing, workplace wellness is I'm, I'm definitely going to be looking for some organizations who are willing to uh, pilot some yoga workplace wellness yeah. with me, partner I'm, with me. I'm seeing more and more of that as a, not just a, yeah. a trend isn't even doing it justice. It's more like a complete shift and transformation 
in the right. workplace. And it's important and it can be really beneficial. So I'm going to be um, focusing, you know, on those kinds of things and uh, ways to deliver um, and maybe even capitalize on, I would like take the show on the road, yeah. right? So capitalize on uh, the fact that we travel a lot. So folks listening to this right now should reach out to you and, and inquire about other ways to help us bring yoga into our lives, both work lives and personal lives. Right. I love that. Awesome. There's bunches of free videos on Facebook already that people want to give it a try. All different levels. I'm, I'm sure they look way better than the ones we're about to film for me. <laughs> oh, not true, Brandon. And remember, it's not a competition. <laughs> but I can bring some humor and joy to the world. Absolutely. And, and I'm, anything I can do, Diane, I'm, I'm willing to do it. Well, we're grateful. You do it well. Well, Diane, thanks for coming on. This was an absolute gift and helped me tremendously. I already took away a lot of nuggets and hopefully everyone listening did as well. So thank you. Well, thanks for having me, Brandon. I really enjoyed it. I just want people to do more yoga. I... I I know you do. It's fantastic. And, and and thank you for listening and watching. Of course, catch a new show every Sunday at 7.30 p.m. on iTunes.TheBrandonSmithShow.com and live on Facebook.com, Facebook.com forward slash Brandon Smith WPT for Workplace Therapist. And if you've enjoyed today's show, and hopefully you have, please rate, review, and subscribe on iTunes. That's how more folks find us and we can make a bigger difference in the world. So until the next show... Have a great week and an awesome life.